So she's, she's going to be a little bit gushy today about Tom Jones, who is another fictional bad boy who I've fallen helplessly in love with. So that's a thing that's happened again. Um, I'm sorry, but also I'm not sorry. And I will defend my right to uh, fall in love with fictional characters from the 18th and 19th century until my death. And you cannot take them away from me. So. I have just, like, just finished a work call, and instead of doing, like, a whole nice little YouTube setup, I was so excited to talk about the book that I have just finished this week that I was like, I screw it, I just need to record it right now. So I have been reading um, A History of Tom Jones, a foundling, which I believe was published in 1749, and it was written by Henry Fielding, and oh my goodness, if I thought that I loved Clarissa, like, the feelings that I feel about this book is just like a whole new kind of love. The story obviously centres on a bad boy protagonist, of course it does. Except here's the thing, guys, here's the thing. Tom is a bad boy who also is like the nicest person you'll ever meet. She's like, how does that work? He has like one very, um like particular weakness I think we can say and that is of like the physical kind and poor Tom he's just so handsome and he's such a gentleman that all of these girls just kind of like throw themselves at him and he tries like he really really tries to avoid them and to not get into any scrapes um, of the fatherhood kind and yet he kind of always like gives in just a little bit. It's kind of like, Tom. It's like part adventure, part romance. And the adventure is the story of Tom's being kicked out of his adoptive father's house. He's very cruelly set up by some other people in his family who make out like he's this really terrible, awful, awful person. And yet we know that he isn't, right? And so Tom is left penniless to find his own way in the world. And he ends up going down to London. And of course, beautiful Sophia also ends up running away from her family um, because her father is like insistent that she's going to have to marry this man that she doesn't want to. Very similar to Clarissa. The character of Sophia is very similar to Clarissa in some ways, but not all. Um, and what's really, really interesting is that not only were these novels like published within a year of each other, but I know that Henry Fielding, who wrote this book, and then Samuel Richardson, who wrote Clarissa, they like hated each other for a really long time. And they were constantly like at loggerheads about their novels. Sophia is, uh, she's like the most beautiful girl in the world, we're told. And she's so loving and she's so kind and she's so good to everyone and she's so nice to her servants which is another thing that we learn about Clarissa. She's just essentially like good in every single way and here's the catch of course that Sophia and Tom are desperately in love with one another but Tom just kind of can't help himself. He ends up getting into a few situations shall we say that Sophia finds out about which basically puts their relationship in jeopardy. It's kind of a bit of a Romeo and Juliet situation. Their families don't want them to be together. All of the elements that should make a great tragedy, and yet it's like one of the funniest comedies I have read. And I'm talking even like modern stuff. It was just so ridiculous. Like it was an absolute farce. Um, it reminded me of something that would be in like like very like Blackadder or like Monty Python like it was very much like old school British humour just making fun of everybody like nobody escapes. The characterizations are incredible like the the hero himself Tom Jones is an extremely complex character and in many ways he has these like really traditional classical heroic values but he has a couple of um, vices that he just kind of really can't help himself with and it really does build him up as this super authentic, really understandable and also really likeable and let's be honest kind of like attractive character and it's the exact same thing with Sophia which is in a way I, I love like I love the character of Clarissa for so many reasons in fact one of the reasons why I love Clarissa is because she's so exaggerated she's meant to be so perfect and so infallible 
that it's just like this wild non-human version of what a woman should be. But Sophia is like a real girl and, and Sophia is in love with this kind of bad boy, you know, and it's sort of relatable. And yeah, she's this fantastic character who is really good and dutiful and kind and empathetic, but she also has this real weakness for a man who perhaps is not as true as he should be which again is like very relatable and you can understand her character a lot. I've got to say for the time period and when you think like how early on this is into the the kind of modern concept of a novel, it is like incredible how good the, the pacing for a 900 and something page book is incredible. The narrative structure, we're kind of going back and forth and all over the place, but it really builds this tension and it it kind of adds more humour because there are things that you see happen and then you only learn later from somebody else's perspective what was actually going on. He does, like many authors of this period, use a lot of Latin phrases, but what I really love about Henry Fielding is he often translates them for you. So he kind of, it's a bit of like a running joke with his reader where he kind of is making fun of his readers who can't read and write in Latin. And so he'll like translate stuff for you, assuming that you're not clever enough to know what it means, which is really funny. And there's this kind of miniature essay running throughout it. So at the beginning of every book, because it's separated like um, Clarissa and other books of this period into volumes, at the beginning of each new volume, he kind of starts it with this sort of rambly essay, which part addresses like the philosophy of art and writing and the nature of an author and the nature of fiction which like I found really fascinating. He also like starts this seemingly from my perspective although I'm sure it came from somewhere like one-sided argument with people who are like reading his book and don't like it and he just like absolutely trashes on these people finds all sorts of really elaborate and funny ways to tell them how stupid they are um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that bit of it because you kind of get the author's personality comes out so strong throughout this book. It's kind of like part autobiography in that sense. So I'm going to call it a day there and I'm going to go because otherwise I just will never stop talking about this. But yeah, that's all I have to say about Tom Jones.